Still going. I have to go. I have to go. <laughs> I'm missing it. I'm just like, whenever you guys would like. You're listening. You're listening to KUPS. Oh, yeah. Across campus. Oh, across oh, campus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, one more time. You're listening to KUPS. Across KUP. campus on KUPS. I'm sorry. You're listening to Across Campus on KUPS. That's that is okay. <laughs> You're. Oh. You're. You're listening to Across Campus on KUPS. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Across Campus. My name is Casey Krolchek. This is our first show of the semester, and we're going to be talking about the class of 2016. But before we start, I would like to introduce my co-host, Carol Prince. This is her first show that she's ever done with with Across Campus. And actually, I'm just going to turn it over her, to her so she can do a brief intro for herself. Carol. Hey there. Good morning, everybody. This is Carol. I am, along with Casey, a member of the class of 2014. I am a transfer student, and this is my first semester with Across Campus, and I'm really excited to be here and hear about some of the members of our classes here and learn more about UPS. But you were a part of the Across Campus Nation way before you were a host of the show. Like, Tell us a little bit more about that. I was. Um, last fall, I was looking to maybe transfer schools and gathering information about prospective liberal arts colleges. That's kind of what I was going for. And I just shot out a wide net and was doing some information gathering and came across Across Campus on YouTube, actually. Um, I heard Casey all the way from the East Coast. And I heard him do about three shows with different student groups. And it was pretty incredible, pretty awesome. So uh, I'm really excited about the possibility for other people to hear our show. So I'm really thrilled to be here. Well, it's great to have you. It's good to be like, to have a Across Campus team. It's going to be a great semester. We're going to have a lot of great shows coming at you. And if anybody over in Jones Hall is listening to this, I did bring in a student to the school, so I'm I'm just waiting for that cut of the tuition to come in. But anyways, we'll talk about we'll we'll talk about that later, and I'll just pop into Jones for that. But anyways, we have three guests in the studio today representing the class of 2016. We have Alexandria Van Boris from Long Beach, California. We have Akila Blakely Blakey, sorry, from St. Paul, Minnesota, and Akisha Jones from here in Tacoma, Washington. So to all three of you, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks. Great to be here. All right, well, I'll just, I'll start with Alexandra. Can you just tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and how did you get to Puget Sound? Um, my name is Alexandria. As we've said, I'm from Long Beach, California, so in between like LA and Orange County, it's in LA County. I got invited to look at UPS through a brochure I received probably early last year. And it just looked like an awesome place, and I immediately was very drawn to it. So I applied to all the UCs, you know, as all Californians pretty much do. And then I also applied to a few private schools because I was really interested in the idea of just like a small liberal arts education. And I visited all of the schools I applied to after I got like, found out if I was accepted or not. And UPS was the last college I came and visited, and I immediately, once I was on campus, just fell in love with it. Everybody was so nice, and I did an overnight visit, and I could definitely see myself here for four years, and it just made everything kind of click, and I loved how helpful my admission counselor was, and it just was great, so I just kind of knew. And did you did you ever meet with an admission counselor in California? I did, actually. They had a... a prospective student like ceremony not ceremony but get together mm -hmm. and it was in San Diego and my mom and I drove down and we went and they had a wonderful presentation and questions and answer sessions and yeah and Mike Rodersman was there and he just answered all the questions and it was great. Yeah Puget Sound has a few pipeline states that they kind of like direct all of their well not all of their admission officers to but like I mean I'm from Minneapolis Minnesota and they had an admission officer out there on like a meet and greet day where you can meet like alumni from Puget Sound and other prospective students, but yeah, they've got this kind of going on all over the place. Anyways, we'll, kind of, we'll, we'll move along. Uh, why don't we next move to Akila? Uh, can you tell us again a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and how did you end up at the University of Puget Sound? Yeah, I'm from St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, honestly, I didn't know about Puget Sound until about a year ago. Uh, I was really looking on the East Coast. Um, I was really interested in Syracuse. So it was like, a, like maybe bigger universities. Um, and a representative came to our school 
And I'm like, Puget Sound, like, what is that? I mean, I'll just check it out. And, like, she gave a really excellent presentation, and I was so, like, I don't know, I was really, really interested. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to apply here. And so I got in, and I came for the admitted student days, and I felt so at home on campus. Like, it felt like a home away from home in a, in a weird way, although I'm from Minnesota, and this is Washington, which is really far. But, um, yeah, it was awesome, and I everyone was really welcoming. And, yeah, I, I feel like this is a really great fit. So. And to kind of get an idea of a timeline, like, you were accepted, and, and when were those accepted student days? And so what, um, what kind of a time frame were you looking at? This was maybe in March, late March. So, yeah, I pretty much knew then that I wanted to come here. Gotcha. And you said that this, like, really became, well, it felt like home to you. And I'm from Minnesota, too, and it kind of, like, struck me as that same thing. And it's, I mean not a half world away, but half a country away mm -hmm. from uh, where we're from. But, like, what what I mean, what mean, little pieces about about the school, like, really made you think, like, gosh, this, this feels like someplace that I could, like, live at and feel comfortable in? Um, well, it was, like, small enough where I could have, like, you know, maybe build, like, a nice community. But then it was still big enough where I can meet a lot of new people. Like, I mean, when I'm here on campus, I mean, of course I'm a freshman, but I see new people every day, and it's great. But then I'm still able to see people I recognize, and so it's great. It's not too big, and it's not too small. Right, well, that sounds great. Right, we'll move on to uh, Nikisha. And you're from Tacoma. It's not like Puget Sound is half a world away. This is in your hometown. So why don't you tell us a little, just I mean, same question. How did you get to the University of Puget Sound, and you know what drew you to the school? Well, I was actually born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And like a decade or so ago, my family and I moved out to Washington and eventually settled in Tacoma, and I've been here since. So um, living here and growing up here, it's been a little bit of a, not like, it's an easier, I guess, distance to move from yeah. being already being in Tacoma to going to college in Tacoma. But that's probably, that's probably one of the, primary reasons why I picked UPS because of the distance from home. Like, as far as my college search went, I typed in the closest radius from, like, my <laughs> apartment <laughs> to see which colleges were nearby. Um, and it kind of came between POU and UPS. And I was like, who wants to be a loot when you can be a logger? So... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Love the logic of that. Well, why would you be a loot if you could be a logger? So. <laughs> but actually, my older brother... He was in a MESA program, and he um, he did this class here at UPS during the summer a few years back. So that's kind of my first actual knowledge of the campus. And from there, I really liked the curriculum here because I'm a business major, mm -hmm. and they have a business leadership program that's separate than their own business courses. So that's kind of one of the selling points for me as well. Um, and the small class sizes, like what Akilah was saying. So a, lot of, um, a lower student body count faculty ratio. Yeah. Think, so that yeah. That's a big job for a lot of people. We like those little classes. All right, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Across Campus. My name is Casey Kolchak, and you're hearing directly from the class of 2016. Stay with us, everybody. Beautiful, you guys. That was awesome. You guys. <laughs> and if you ever want to break out like dance moves, in that Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Across Campus. My name is Casey Krolchek, and today we are talking with members of the class of 2016, Alexandria Van Boris, Akilah Blakey, and Akisha Jones. Once again, all of you, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thanks. All right, and in this second segment, we are going to be talking about orientation, those first few weeks that you spend at Puget Sound. That is, like, your, your first experience here on campus kind of lays somewhat a foundation for uh, on which you're going to build for the next couple of years. And so we're just going to be listening to like some stories and uh, I don't know, just different thoughts on those first couple of days that we like spend on campus. So anybody who's willing to jump in with their with their first story about orientation being on campus, I think orientation was like summer camp, but to the like crazy amounts. It was like a ton of fun. It was an excellent like program uh, with all the different pieces. 
I had a blast in all of them. I know a lot of people said, well, Passages is like the highlight, but honestly, I just had a great time during all of it. Passages was great, but I think just meeting new people every turn of the way and every step of the way was the highlight for me. And moving into the dorm, I know for all of us, was just so exciting. And we, just, I don't know, I'd been picturing my dorm room for like quite a few years. I was like, when I go to college, it's gonna have this and this and this. And just moving in, and having everything and seeing everything like in my dorm room and actually visualizing myself living here was just surreal to me and meeting everybody was great. Kind of jumping back a bit, can you tell me more about Passages and yeah. I mean, not all of our listeners know exactly what Passages is and what that entails so tell us a little bit more about that Passages process. Passages was great but um, you have three options you can do. You can stay at base camp which they take you to a little camp in the middle of... It's actually, it's a, it's a Boy Scout camp called Camp Parsons out on the Olympic Peninsula. Okay, I... I'm a Boy Scout, so I remember... That's... I, I remember okay, that, so. <laughs> I was like... Don't worry, that's not something that was... You don't remember that? Camp Parsons? I'm yeah. a failure. Camp Parsons, it's up, it's up on the uh, Olympic Peninsula, so they bring their students up there. Very cool. Yes, they do, and that would be... Ba <laughs> <laughs> that would be base camp, and we all start there, and then you... If you don't choose base camp and you don't choose to do like rock climbing or doing yoga or any of those activities, day kayaking, then you can either do a overnight canoe trip or a two-night backpacking trip. And then there's different levels. There is beginning, moderate, and advanced backpacking. So you get your choice, and then depending on what you do, you go from there. I myself did moderate backpacking, which was quite an experience. I'll give you that one. But everything was just really fun, and I know everybody had a lot of time. Yeah, I did the advanced backpacking trip, but people who went on the medium backpacking trip didn't actually say that there was anything like immediate or medium or moderate about it. It's still a pretty, it's still a pretty, pretty intense trip. It is. No matter how you go about it. Yes. But yeah, so Nikisha and Akila, what what act, what activities did you guys do for uh, like a start with passages, and what about the rest of orientation? Like, what kind of stuff did you guys get into? Um. Well, for passages, I did day kayaking. And I've never kayaked before, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to be adventurous and just do something I've never done. And it was honestly just, like, the best time. Um, my Passages leaders were excellent. They were so welcoming. And, I mean, I was, like, a scared little freshman. I'm like, uh, I don't know. So they were, yeah, they <laughs> were so nice. I'm on a body so of water. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a body of water, and I don't know how to kayak or anything. But it was great. And um, so, yeah, and... For, uh, what is it? It's actually like Passages. What was it? Uh, well, there's there's Prelude, Prelude, there's Urban Plunge. Okay, for Urban Plunge, we um, went to, like, the food shelf, and or the food kitchen, and we were, like, cutting potatoes and stuff like that. So it was a lot of, like, hard work, because we were just, like, cutting potatoes for, like, three hours, but afterwards we were able to feed, like, a ton of people, and it was great. It was great, so... Yeah, that Urban Plunge piece is kind of like a community service project that they have all freshmen participate in. So I've heard stuff about about that. There's also cleanup projects going going on, like around like some creeks in, in Tacoma. I think when I when I did that, we went to a garden. It was like a small farm for uh, mentally handicapped Tacomans, and it was able. It was like a place that would provide employment uh, and then food for locals. So, but yeah, they have a number of projects that they have going with that. What about you, Nikisha? Anything that stood out to you, like in your orientation days? Well, if I can drag back the memories, um, it was a little bit different for me for orientation because being from Tacoma originally, I was already established here as far as like life roots. Um, so essentially, I was working a summer job full time and looking for a job for the fall at the same time. So when or when orientation came, I kind of had to drop everything miss a couple of like my ending days of work and kind of cut my schedule back to accommodate for the freshman experience. So with that, um, Passages camping was different because I hadn't been camping for a long period of time and the little supply list, even that was overwhelming as far as what to bring and what not to bring. And I realized once we got there, half the things I brought I didn't need. And one of the things most people did need was a watch. FYI, for anyone else coming here, you should have a watch when you go on camping without your phone. So bring a watch on passages. <laughs> <laughs> that was not part of the list, but either way, um, it was a good sort of retreat for me. I found being 
in the passages, three days of a away from school, away from life, away from people that you knew, and away from technology. It was a nice sort of just breather for me. And additionally, Prelude, which is kind of the educational field trip aspect of it all, I really liked that experience because I went into a, it's like they bring you to a different part of Tacoma so you can get more immersed in the community. But I went to a part I hadn't even been in before being from Tacoma, so that was even a new experience for me. Um, and I learned a lot about just different areas of Tacoma, what the history was, what the culture was behind it. And I met one of my teachers that I ended up really liking to take a course from. Shout out to Dexter Gordon. And that kind of introduced me to a field of study that I didn't know was really offered on campus beforehand. So that was also interesting. That's not the first time Dexter Gordon has earned a shout out on this show. He's an amazing professor. <laughs> but yeah, he's in the African American Studies Department. He also teaches in communications. Right, but... and now I want to double major in communications and minor in African American yeah, Studies. Yeah, I'm minoring in African American Studies, and that's in large part because, <laughs> because of the work that Dexter has yeah. done. But yeah, he's an awesome professor. Where did they actually bring you for a prelude? We went to Salishan, um, which is kind of a, it's a part of Tacoma Housing Authority, and it's a branch of community living that is more upgraded than what you see as far as mm -hmm. normal societies of like assisted living. So it's a big project that they do to make the best sort of experience for people there. And there's a lot that goes behind it that I can't really orate that well, but it's cool. Yeah, and this is kind of going off like the current topic a little bit, but you're talking about like how you have lived in Tacoma for a long time and you're still discovering little pieces that like you've never you've never been to before. You know, like what were your what were your thoughts about what I guess what did you know about Puget Sound before you applied before you applied here before you decided that you were gonna go here? Like what's kind of like the Tacoma like view and understanding um, of the University of Puget Sound? Well, it huh. It depends on who you talk to, but for the most part PLU is a little bit more well known, I'm sorry, than UPS. But people get the letters mixed up often. So even if they mean UPS, they'll accidentally say PLU. <laughs> but either way, when UPS is purposely mm -hmm. on the topic, it is more like um, a prestigious sort of thing. It's a the private school up north, you know, that sort of way. And yeah. um, when you say you're going to UPS, you get like, clarify that again. And they're like, oh, good job. So it's a, it's a good sort of ranking as far as Tacoma Colleges go. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we're going to take another break. Once again, you're listening to Across Campus. My name is Casey Krolchek. We are hearing from some phenomenal members of the class of 2016. We're going to take a short break. Stay with us. Yes? By the way, I'd like to retract the word just because you're doing a lot. You're not just doing something. No. Oh. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Across Campus. My name is Casey Krolchek, and you're listening to Across Campus. Uh, today in the studio, we have members of the class of 2016, Alexander Van Boris, Akilah Blakey, and Nakisha Jones, uh, just talking about their experiences here at the University of Puget Sound. So once again, welcome back into the studio. Uh, in this next segment, we're going to be talking about life transitions, living and studying at the University of Puget Sound, going from living in a home environment or away from the oh, away from Tacoma or the, and the University of Puget Sound to suddenly living in a residence hall, uh, adjusting from high school academics to college academics. There are a number of transitions that you have to make. So we'll start with Akila. What kind of what kind of tra transitions have you gone through in moving out to Tacoma and starting at the University of Puget Sound? Um, well, I think for me the biggest thing is like maybe transportation. Uh, like through high school, I was a I had a car, um, and coming here, I don't have a car. So I and of course this is a new city, new state, and I didn't know how to get anywhere. So it's been pretty like hard um, having to like sometimes stay on campus or trying to find oh I need this and that and trying to get there. But that's probably been the biggest transition. But with the dorm life. Um, I have siblings, so sharing things is not a new thing to me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was pretty easy um, meeting my roommate and, um, you know, this is my side of the room. I have to keep my side of the room clean. Uh, so that's it's been pretty fun. And, um, yeah. yeah. Do you get along with your roommate the same as you do your siblings? Um, uh, <laughs> I would say <laughs> I did definitely, no, definitely, she's like, she's really cool, um, we definitely hit it off, 
Um, so I, I mean, siblings are different than peers. So yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah so it, yeah, it's been great, great. Yeah. All right, wonderful. What about like transitioning from high school academics to Puget Sound academics? Like, were you able, have you been able to do do that pretty easily? Like, what kind of adjustments have you needed to make there? Um, well, in high school, I did the IV program, so oh, okay. um, just honestly, it's been pretty easy. The homework hasn't been too bad. I've heard some. So. I've I've heard about IV before. I need to. I, I wasn't in IV, but I've heard that it is a really intense program. It is. Uh, I had to take like seven like IV exams mm -hmm. last year. Um, it was an experience. But, I mean, I wouldn't have changed it. I would have definitely still done it because, I mean, I feel like I'm so prepared now. So the transition with homework, it's been great. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. All right. Well, how about you, Nikisha? What kind of transitions have you gone through so far uh, in your time at Puget Sound? Where do I start? Well, I, I guess I can start with high school versus college academics. And... For me, it's a different sort of take on things. I graduated high school two years ago, so I've had, as they say, the academic gap. But I, um, upon entering school life again, it's a little bit sort of, where do you go from here as far as, like, am I up to par? Although I know that I'm definitely of standard to do all of the curriculum here. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of, well, I haven't really written an essay in two years, so how do you start? But fortunately, the Writing and Learning Center here is a great sort of tool to use for people who need some extra help or refreshers or outlines. So that, that's a good resource. And um, as far as like the area goes, fortunately, I haven't had to do the whole being in a new city, new state, new surroundings besides um, campus, but... What most people don't know is even though I'm from Tacoma, I was always a homebody because I'm the only girl in my family. I have two older, two older brothers and a younger brother and a dad. And so I was sheltered as far as like, you can't go outside because it's dangerous. <laughs> and <laughs> Protective brothers and father. So I didn't really get out much into the community when I was living at home. But since I've left, it's been a whirlwind of new areas and new locations and I've adjusted. Um, so that's kind of sort of different but on the same page. And um, what else? Well, college life. I find that it's not that different than high school as far as you do the same thing. Like you get up, you go to class, you do homework, you do extracurriculars, you talk to people, you try to study, and then you wake up and do the same thing over again. But it was a little bit of a, it's a different sort of outlook for me because prior to coming to college, I moved away from home before the usual like college cycle goes. Yeah. Um, in the beginning of summer, I moved out and I live independently now. And so that was a bit of a, it was, it was a different sort of start to. A unique transition. Yeah. Yes, for that matter. Um, especially because living at home, I couldn't work or um, I didn't go to community college and I didn't even have an ID like a state ID so I had to start from like scratch and find all the little pieces you need and like get your, your your social security card all those things you didn't really count that you need eventually but you do once you have to start sustaining yourself um, so it was a little bit of a process and I didn't really have a place to live as soon as I left home and I had to find different outlets as far as where to sleep tonight and what to eat and where to go and who can I call. But upon those different challenges, um, I happened upon being able to come to a place that I can call home now and live somewhere that I don't have to worry about, will I be able to stay here next week because it's guaranteed for the whole year as a freshman. And <laughs> it's a nice sort of welcoming experience, and it's stable. That's kind of like my ultimate goal this summer was finding a stable place to live. And what kind of resources did you find on campus? You talked a little bit about the like Center for Writing, Learning, and Teaching, but like as far as you know, getting to the University of Puget Sound, not having a state ID, a social security number, like who do you work with at the school in order to kind of get all that straightened out? Um, 
No one. I kind of went to different agencies in Tacoma. Okay. First, there's different self like social services groups here and around. But after I accumulated my ID and paperwork and stuff, like I, one of the hardest parts about being homeless is not having an address. As far as yeah. like, where do you send things that you need? How do you get an um, acceptance letter? Yeah. The hardest, yeah, the hardest part was having an address to put on that ID, having a place for your school forms to go, having an uh, address to get a library card. It was difficult, but afterwards, um, after securing just an address line, I started moving forward from there. And applying here is where the biggest help came from. My counselor, Sam O'Riggs, and he's been like my saving grace as far as the rest of the pieces falling in line with me coming to college. Um, so he's been the greatest asset and support, and he bent over backwards to help me in every way possible from everything else. All right, beautiful. Long <laughs> journeys, but it's good to, good to have you at the University of Puget Sound. Thanks. All right, moving straight along, we've got Alexandria. Uh, what kind of transitions did you find yourself going through in your time here at Puget Sound so far? It's been a really crazy, but fun transition. I, well, I'll start with the academics as well. I took AP classes and I felt relatively prepared for college, but I don't think anything can prepare you for the transition that is high school to college. It's crazy to me and um, I'm a science major. I'm hoping to major in biology and eventually become a marine biologist. So the science is definitely challenging to me and it science was never necessarily my forte i just have a passion for marine biology and saving the environment but yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> um, no excuses needed. <laughs> but my professors have been really understanding and i know that when i was applying they you know people i spoke to were like oh just utilize your office hours and i was like oh okay but now i just definitely agree with that and my professors have just been great about it and they'll walk me through it if i don't understand it and i think i may be able to survive so that's always good news <laughs> As far as just adjusting to college life in general, um, I was I am an only child, so it's been definitely different for me. But it's been great. It's been great. Um, I just it's really fun to get to know everybody, and I'm not really used to like having to share so much. I know that sounds terrible, but but it's been great, and it's been really under like my floor. I live in Schiff. Shout out to Schiff. But um, <laughs> hi guys, no, um, but it's been great and we're just all really becoming one awesome group of people. I don't want to say family because it sounds cheesy, but I think that having that group of people really helps the transition and I mean, I'm not going to lie, at the beginning I was like calling my mom and being like, mom, I'm coming home, I'm coming back to the beach, I can't do this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but now I will trade the beach for Puget Sound for the next four years and I'll be happy. I think it'll be great. And as far as just other kind of like changes, I know Akila, you mentioned not having a car. Um, I was fortunate to have a car, and so I've had so much fun exploring. And it's a convertible, so it's not really conducive to Washington, but I'm gonna make it work. So if you need a ride. <laughs> but I don't know, I think the transition's been crazy, but it's been really, really exciting. And it's a fun transition to have. I guess something that we haven't really touched on yet, uh, you all have majors kind of picked out so far. But like, what was that like? Picking out classes and trying to like hash out, you know, what is available at Puget Sound, and what classes am I going to take, and what do what do I want to major in? Yeah, that was the process. Um, initially, when I did start looking at Puget Sound, I thought they'd have a huge marine biology program because we're on the Puget Sound, and I was kind of surprised you guys did it. But you have tons of opportunities to do so, and um, it's been great. Picking classes was crazy tough for me and it was just hectic and I'm not used to having decisions made and it turned out I didn't get in a, a class I needed which was chemistry so that was kind of like a mess but everything got straightened out which was really happy made me happy so that I didn't have to yeah. but yeah we figured it out and there are people always wanting to help you to figure it out and I know that if I'd been in a bigger school I would have just been lost in the shuffle and just a number or at least I had somebody I could ask here so it was fun, it was exciting, and I can't wait to like continue to choose my classes and see where I end up. Well, for me, my approach was get the core classes out of the way. So I went through every list of, well, our, our advisor, and she directed us, you want to make sure those are done by the time you're a sophomore, um, so get as much done while you're a freshman as possible. Well, you need a freshman, sophomore, junior year. 
Either way, mm -hmm. um, I just went down the list of what the core classes were, so I made sure that, like right now I have four out of them for the, this semester. And then um, being in business leadership program, BLP for short, there's also extra seminars that we do. There's a little bit of outside resource and out, um, engagements that we are a part of that is not in the curriculum or in the course anyway. So that played a role. And um, I guess like the most difficult part was getting <laughs> my foreign language straightened out because yeah. I had taken three years of high school Spanish and then not went and not taking the course for two years and then coming to college is like I don't I don't want to start rudimentary but am I ready for advanced it was a big like discrepancy but talking to the Spanish teachers themselves was the best approach for me because they kind of told you what each level looks like yeah I, I had kind of the same thing when I came in as a freshman like I had been away from Spanish for two years and then I like I, I actually had like my language requirement out of the way but I love languages so I wanted to take uh, another Spanish class, but I kind of went through that same thing, like, do I go into Spanish 101 because I haven't been speaking Spanish for two years, or do I just jump into 201? I found that, like, it actually works just fine, like, they do enough review in 201 yeah. to kind of, like, get back on your feet and start pushing your head again, but, like, what did you think about that? Were you, have, you, have you been able to jump into Spanish 201 all right? I, yeah, initially I signed up for 101, just be safe, mm -hmm. and make sure I'm at least in a Spanish class, yeah. but then after the first day, I was like, I can't do this, I can't sit and go through all this again and pretend, like, it's not annoying me because <laughs> <laughs> this is too much. Because I'd rather be challenged in my courses rather than just sit and pass a grade. So I talked to my instructor and we set up a way that I can arrange moving up to the next class and just feeling it out. And if it worked for me, then great, I can stay in it. And if it didn't, then I can just back down to her class again and it wouldn't be um, any difficulty. So that was nice. Um, and also, being in BLP, they sign up, they sign everyone up for a class just to start with. So one of my classes was already picked for me, which is economics. So that was one less thing. Do you I have it with Ross? Do you have it with Ross? I then? do. Oh, Ross is, a, <laughs> Ross is a wonderful professor. I really enjoyed him. Has he told you about his game that he invented yet? I don't think so. Okay, well, he's invented a game, and he was very sure that if he, if he, if it, if the opportunity cost were, oh my, <laughs> if, if, if the opportunity cost were favorable were favorable enough if he were to give up like his job at the university he's absolutely absolutely sure that his board game would be a like a, a smashing success but given the opportunity cost of giving up like a steady job at the university working with students uh he hasn't been able to undertake that i see but he'll he'll tell you about the game at, at, at some point you might end up and you might end up playing it if you're lucky but right. that's just a that's just like a memory that i have of ross singleton Anyways, Akila, you also, you picked out a, you, you said you're going to major in biology, right? Yeah, I'm hopefully I'll be pre med. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely a science person. I love biology. But uh, when I first was looking at the school, I play violin. So I auditioned for the music school. So I hope to minor in violin performance. So it's like music and science, and it's, uh, it's a lot of work because it's just, you know, opposite sides of the spectrum. But, um, yeah, that's what I'm hoping to pursue. So. All right, sweet deal. Well, we're going to take another break. Once again, you're listening to Across Campus. My name is Casey Kolchak. Stay with us. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to KEPS 90.1 FM Tacoma, The Sound. My name is Casey Kolchak, and I'm the co-host of Across Campus. Uh, for this show, we are talking with members of the class of 2016, 2016 Alexandria Van Voris, Akilah Blakey, and Nikisha Jones. Uh, once again, this is, our la this is our last segment. Welcome to the studio. Uh, and in this last segment, in this last act, we are going to be talking about four-year visions. Where do you think you'll be in 2016 when you're graduating? Like you'll, you'll be wrapping up your classes. Uh, hopefully, you'll be looking beyond the university. But like, We'll start with Keisha. Where do you see yourself four years from now? I have a pretty clear track in mind as far as where I see myself. For one, I want to be, or I will be, a business major with an emphasis in finance. Um, and then depending on whether I pair that with communications or economics as my major or minor, will kind of lead off into the rest of my career path. But essentially, I want to work in the financial sector of the corporate world. Um, 
I'm not sure which position under that yet, maybe financial consultant or somewhere around that area. And then after I get some experience in that field, I'm going to transition into owning my own business. And I am looking into a business that has high profits. And there's a reason for that. But it all depends on where the economy shifts over these next four years, so it's not set in stone for me. I just kind of have the outline for it. And then after I own my business and run that for a few, maybe a few years, um, I'm going to start my own non-for-profit. And my non-for-profit will be um, a community center that's, that's focused on self-sustainability for the masses or whoever needs it the most urgently, depending on where our society shifts as well. So I'm going to, in my first phase of my career, I'm going to make a lot of money. And in the second phase, I'm going to give it all back and do it in a way that I see fit as far as what the needs are in our community and abroad. Well, to all of our listeners out there who are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or seniors who have no idea where they'll be by the time they graduate, don't feel bad. Nikisha just happens to be extraordinary in this sense. So, but that's actually that's not typical for a, for, for a student, especially uh, a freshman just coming in to have like that. I mean, that's, those are lofty visions. That's really, that's really awesome. So I mean, way to go on that. But, Thanks. So, uh, moving on, Alexandria, what kind of what kind of vision do you have for yourself uh, four years down the road from now? I hope four years from now to hopefully be at, in a grad school or having the path to a grad school, um, preferably like a prestigious grad school for marine biology. As far as my major, again, I'd like to be a biology major with an environmental policy and decision-making minor. And I just hope to look back at these awesome four years and just know that I did everything I could to make them like so fun and just have no regrets. I think that's my major thing. I just wanna look back and be like, I did it all and it was so much fun and no regrets. And then hopefully have an amazing career, either in marine mammal rehabilitation, I'm kind of looking into that, or possibly the more policy side of that. Um, initially I came to the UPS because I love the Puget Sound and I love like the southern resident orca population and all of that. So hopefully maybe doing some research with that. That would be awesome. Sounds great. Keelan, you're last. Um, yeah, I hope to, uh, you know, be pre-med. I mean, yeah, I want to be a doctor and save the world through medicine. But, like, that's that's really is my dream, and I'm willing to work hard for it. So I really want to take advantage of this opportunity. I mean, I have four years to just work really hard. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be really fun and exciting. So I guess we'll see. All right, awesome. Uh, we're heading into our last couple minutes of the show. Is there anything else anybody wanted to share? Shout-outs you wanted to make? Alexandria already made one to uh, Schiff, Schiff, the residence hall yes. over on North Park. <laughs> uh, I guess, Nikisha, you, you made one to text your version. I, I guess you're the only one who hasn't made a shout-out to anybody. Um, you can do friends, family, the uh, residence Yeah, hall. I guess uh, <laughs> shout-out to my family. Uh, they're in Minnesota. So we can wave. St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah, St. Paul, <laughs> Minnesota. Shout-out. Yeah, that was an option. Shout out to my mom and shout out to all my friends back home that I'm going to make you listen to this when I get back. Um, not, that, not, not that you have to make people listen to it, but you know, California people are now going to be cultured in UPS's music stations. Well, actually, Cal California is one of our, uh, one of uh, well, as far as like the people who are listening to the show on, on YouTube, that's actually one of my largest constituencies. Really? Yeah, as far as viewers go, uh, Washington is definitely the highest on the list. That's where we get most of our listeners. But after that, like you get California, you get Oregon. I get Minnesota. You get you get a lot of uh, listeners out on the East Coast, and then internationally. Like I, I have to check back the list again, but I think we're up around like 30, 35 countries that have had uh, listeners like go on YouTube, find the show, and listen to something. So the message gets gets out there. So if you want to wave to anybody that's somewhere else in the world, look up at the camera now. But yeah, so that 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 sort of wraps up this uh, episode of Across Campus. My name is Casey Krolcheck. You can find these shows on YouTube by searching University of Puget Sound Across Campus. Once again, I'm Casey Krolcheck, and I have my co-host. This is Carol. Thanks for listening. And we'll be back next week talking with transfer students here at, the, here at the University of Puget Sound. And Carol will be leading that one up as she has specialty in the area of transferring to the University of Puget Sound. Make sure to tune in. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Well done.